Uh, hello, my name is Matthew, and for the month of November, I decided to read all things Roman. I was going to read Roman nonfiction, Roman uh, history, Roman biographies. Um, I have my book club uh, going on with Steve Donahue. We're reading the biographies of Julius Caesar and Galba by uh, Plutarch and Suetonius. And I gave myself a big, uh, sprawling history of the Roman Empire, the decline and fall of the Roman Empire by Edward Gibbon. Um, and as a change of pace, to give myself uh, something smaller, uh, when I'm not in the mood uh, to read the fast-paced uh, lives of uh, great legendary men or when I didn't want to pick up the uh, big history book and read uh, just large, uh, sprawling stories of the whole of the uh, Roman Empire, I thought I would read poetry. And um, I decided to pick up uh, Virgil's uh, the Eclogues and Georgics. I haven't read it before. Uh, so much about this I thought was going to be right up my alley. They are uh, pastoral poems set in the uh, Roman or Italian countryside. Uh, the characters are uh, shepherds, and, uh, farmers, uh, peasants, slaves, ex-slaves, uh, just living off the land. And it's a series of um, 10 or 12, 10 uh, pastoral poems. I, I only read the eclogues so far. After I read the first one, I thought I might make a video on each uh, eclogue and have a series of ten. Uh, I read them all um, straight through over a, a day or two, and they're, they're uh, repetitive. Uh, they have very similar stories. Um, they're, they're poems that run on a theme. And I didn't enjoy it. Uh, Virgil's um, voice is rigid and lifeless. The, the other Roman poet that I feel like I'm familiar with, um, Horace, is so different. Horace has a, um, a, a voice that comes off the page that really makes you believe that uh, he, he was a man that have, had lived experiences, um, had thoughts, had gone through things, and had stories that he wanted to tell, and he put them down in a way that feels like storytelling. Um, that feeling, which isn't um, necessary um, in any sort of poetry or anything, does really feels missing in the eclogues um, because it doesn't feel real in any way. It, it, it entirely feels artificial. The um, some of the background information that I know about is that these poems were, uh, in some ways, set up to be propaganda poems or nationalistic, patriotic poems. Um, they, there were soldiers uh, that were coming back from war that needed to start having regular lives. And uh, part of the agreement that they had with um, generals or Rome was that they would get little pieces of land. And um, Rome, the people, the leaders of Rome, uh, did not want to have a, a restless, uh, Roman um, force of soldiers throughout the Italian countryside um, feeling unhappy or slated. And these poems were going to show uh, the, the, the beauty and virtue, virtue of um, small life living off the, the land, um, the beauty of nature waking up with the sun and tilling the soil and hearing the birds and um, observing the nature um, of their surroundings, the uh, 
trees and brush life and little little creatures and having small conversations with other peasants and shepherds and farmers. Um, it does not feel like um, there are any real experiences um, that Virgil, ha Virgil had or witnessed when it comes to um, living in the countryside and be being a farmer, um, there are hints, these uh, kind of shadowy themes that um, are nearly just a, so obscure or obtuse that um, it's hard to say that it's a, a recurring theme that comes throughout, but there are, are moments in, in the uh, eclogues of some restlessness. Um, Farmers that have lived their whole lives on the countryside that are being um, transplanted, uh, having to leave uh, the land that they lived on for the whole life uh, for, I imagine, soldiers to come in uh, and reclaim that property as their own after their tours. Um, slaves that have regained their freedom or uh, gotten their freedom for the very first time and being put out in the countryside and having to um, start a, a, a life as a free man. Uh, the majority of the poems are these ridiculous, artificial, ph phony uh, situations. It, it's something that happens in several of the poems where uh, people will meet and then have little sing-song contests. Uh, someone will say, "I'm I'm this great singer. I I had a wager with this other farmer, and I won his sheep. And I'm the best singer." And someone else will say, "Well, you're a terrible singer. You can't even um, play on a reed." And they'll say, "Well, let's have at it. Let's get a judge, and we're going to have an impromptu sing-off." Utterly ridiculous. Um, the, the the translation isn't literal. Um, but it, it does feel like a very clear, direct um, <clears throat> translation of ju just the sentiments on the on the page from the Latin, and so there's no um, additional poetics um, in the translation that I read, which was by uh, C. Day Lewis. It's just a very clear, direct translation. And, and so these songs that go back and forth and uh, hearing farmers and shepherds that are just so impressed with uh, hearing about the sacred oak or the, the birds fluttering in the trees it just feels really um, flat and unentertaining. Silly things like, um, have, have you heard about the girl that was greedy for an apple? Just, and the judge, the poor, the other poor person that's walking down the street or down the um, grassy path and confronts these two people that want to have an impromptu sing-off and say, you're going to be the judge. And then all of a sudden he has to sit there and listen to this. Um, <clears throat> really phony. It just, the, the, whole, the whole thing just um, rings as untrue. Um, I, I had high hopes before I even opened it. I had, uh, my own expectations. It's a, a genre of, a subgenre of writing that I do really enjoy. Um, kind of small scale, pastoral, uh, intimate stories. Um, things like Letters from My Windmill bought by Alphonse Dade or even the sketches of a hunter's notebook by Turgenev, just wandering through the countryside and having interactions. Um, none of the interactions between any of the characters that come up in these poems um, feel like they have any sort of authentic voice. Um, and so th those are some of my thoughts on the eclogues by Virgil. I read the first, uh, first few pages of the first poem of the Georgics. 
um, it almost seems like uh, the whatever personality or human characters that are in the eclogues is um, absent from the Georgics, and it's really just pastoral poems of um, uh, the nature in the Roman or Italian countryside. Um, could be a good thing, or it could just feel lifeless. Uh, it, the, the lifelessness could just become ever more present. Um, could be an issue of translation, um, but the, the, the subject matter and the content of the stories really left a lot to be desired. Um, I would really like to find some counterbalance to the histories and biographies that uh, really shine a light on what it was like um, for a peasant or a shepherd or um, just a citizen of Rome um, in their daily lives. Um, not, not the politics or intrigue or um, any of the big stories, but the small stories, how, how people woke up and what, what they did and what kind of situations they found themselves in, what, what they cared about. I didn't find that in this, and it, it might be my own disappointment from having different expectations than from what the book had to offer, but that's what I was looking for, and I didn't find it, so I don't know. Uh, the Eclogues by Virgil. Um, let me know if you've read it. Let me know if you any, have any thoughts or have any comments on anything that I had to say. Um, so please leave a comment if you would like, and thank you for watching, and take care.